Hi, this is Kevin McParland, Senior Analyst with Tab Group, and I'm here with Jeffrey Wu, CEO of Actionable Strategies. Jeffrey, can you tell us first a little bit about your firm? Sure, Kevin. We're a boutique consulting firm that's focused in financial services, and we really work on three things that are on our client's agenda. First is business strategy, and that's linked to business excellence, which is a lot of process. Um, now it's more lean than other things like Six Sigma, but it's focused on the whole operational side around executing a strategy. And then the third thing, equally important, is uh, technology, enabling technology that allows those processes to be implemented and to have that strategy really come to life. That's great. So, w so one thing that sort of intersects around all of that is, is cloud computing. There's been a lot of talk about cloud computing really over the last couple of years. Um, is there is cloud computing really being used in financial services at all? And if so, sort of what are the what types of organizations are really taking hold? Well, in, in our client base, which is more of the larger global institutions and the mid-sized firms, there's significant adoption in point situations. So in other words, the entire technology footprint isn't migrating to the cloud, but where there's an opportunity or an inflection point, organizations are taking advantage of the cloud where it makes sense. Of course, the cloud being a moniker for many different things now, which includes hosting, software as a service, and, mm -hmm. and some of those you know, more traditional types of things that extend your network perimeter and I inside a value chain that involves other people. So what are some of the more popular business functions and technologies that people are moving into a cloud or a software as a service environment? Horizontally, of course, you're seeing the, the notion of moving messaging and collaboration there, of course, with the constraints imposed by regulation and internal compliance, and then the, the risk profile of the organization. Um, you're also seeing the uh, infrastructure getting pushed out so that you have elasticity around your cost and your operating model for that types of infrastructure, so people are driving testing environments, mm -hmm. uh, pre even pre-production type of environments where they can put it under load so that it more mimics a, a, uh, a, a scenario in real usage, and then they can tear it down without incurring the, the recurring costs sure. related to maintaining those types of environments. So with the regulations, you raise an interesting point, and mm -hmm. this is something that um, we've discussed before. Is it seems to me that regulations are probably the, the biggest barrier um, towards a cloud adoption, be way, so, way much more so than technology itself. Mm -hmm. So how do you see the regulatory environment impacting the use of cloud computing and how that might sort of change and grow over time? Well, clearly the regulations are, are lagging and without specificity related to cloud, there's a lot of confusion. Even with those um, people inside an organization whose sole responsibility it is to act as the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, with a client where we did a cloud strategy project, working with their risk management folks, legal and compliance, they really didn't know how to rule other than, well, you know, this is risky. They couldn't tie it to anything specific in any of the regulations, either here or uh, FSA in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was a kind of gray area. So clearly there's a lag between what's going on in the regulatory frameworks and where people are today. And I, I think part of the notion there that scares people is there's this ephemeral cloud as opposed to you're extending your value chain to an external party, which we do all the time when we're doing clearing and settlement, et cetera. So it, it's not that different from a model perspective, but there's additional fear related probably because of the, the use of the marketing terms. So then what advice would you give a financial services firm, big or small, that was looking to use uh, cloud technology uh, for a certain function or a certain piece of their business? Well, just like outsourcing, understand what it is you're getting into. What's the operating model that governs it? What's the risk profile that you're adopting? Do you have risk of data loss? Do you have risk of compromise? Do you have other issues related to both the model and the vendor. In other words, what data is at risk, and then what are the threats posed to that, and how trustworthy is the vendor, and go out and vet that. It's not just trust but verify, it's really verify. So when we work with our clients, a lot of what we'll do is reference check in a manner that doesn't disclose the client. So we get a good understanding of what the issues are, what they faced, and then what risk that poses to our clients. Because going into anything involves risk. It's a matter of understanding what it is and then trying to mitigate it to the best 
possible extent that you can. So cloud computing and financial services is not just buzz. There is there is a, a real story there. There is a real story, and there's adoption of various things. And a, a lot of um, vendors, for example, aren't calling it cloud because of the perceived risk. So if your trading system exists outside of the network perimeter, you're getting it to it over the web, is that in the cloud? You could say it is. and. You'd be probably pretty right. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Well, th great. Thanks for coming in. Uh, again, pleasure. this is Kevin McPartland, Senior Analyst with Tab Group. I'm here with Jeffrey Wu, the CEO of Actionable Strategies. Thanks for listening. Until next time.